Hi guys, in this video I would like to show you how I created this environment scene and the assets used in it. I'm going to explain you my creation process on the tower from the concept and idea to the texturing and final asset integration into the game engine. Also, I'll be showing you the workflow used for the other assets like rocks and foliage and my approach on the overall style and mood of the scene. Okay, so the tower changed a bit from its original design, which I drew like five years ago, and went from this concept to this final concept. I didn't plan to have an environment scene, I just wanted to make the tower as close as possible to the hero of the storm art style. So I started to gather many references mainly from the game itself and from the building from the game and from Michael Vicente portfolio and some of Nicolas Raid and Ranko Browser like this one. Okay, so after I had the concept done, I just started the blogging of the tower by starting with some basic shapes like cylinders for this part of the tower or some boxes or planes for the main building or like this part here I'm taking in consideration at this point just the overall shape and silhouette based on the concept I have after a first pass on the blocking I just start adding some details like some bolts, windows, some bricks, metal bars to help me understand better the shape of the overall building and again taking care of the seal weights of the of the model. One thing to take in consideration is to think which mesh do I need and how do I need them for the sculpting stage. For example, I have these bricks with some beveled edge, which is going to help me later. These bricks have some beveling too, and this one. Also, an important thing is the modularity, because I wanted to make this tower with a unique texture. So I had to start to think which mesh could be optimized and which could be repeated. For example, this whole tower is repeated here, here, and here. Also, this mesh is repeated, and the bolts, and these bricks. Okay, so once I have the blocking done, I bring everything into ZBrush and start separating the pieces. As you can see here, for example, this tower is just one subtool with many polygroups so um, I start separating the polygroups as I need I do like a third polish pass here in ZBrush where I can start adding some creases to the edges I use the dynamic subdivision so that way I can preview the subdivisions in my mesh and I could make some extra adjustments to the shape in case I need to do that. You can see here that I made the telescope a little bit bigger and some of the shapes I, I made them a little bit bigger as well. Okay, so once I'm happy with the with the result from the blocking, I just start sculpting based on the from the style I'm looking for and based on the references. I add some subdivision and start giving the pieces some sculpt details. Uh, I used the trim dynamic brush, for example, here on the mainly on the edges and, and the corners to help them break a little bit more and give some, some damaging. Also, I use some damaging here in, on the walls and these parts here for example where the 
the metal is contacting the, the walls and inserting to the walls and here the insertion between the bricks I give some carving, some damaging using the clay brush and the trim dynamic brush um, you can see here as well in this part for example I start adding some some carving and same as, as the wall some damaging here also after looking at the references I start adding on the go some new pieces for example like this banner here and some metal parts like this detail this detail and these ones um, which I did directly here on inside ZBrush I finished the sculpt by giving some final pass to the pieces and by doing some some details using for example this brush the art rock detail on the walls and the rock parts like this one uh, to give this to achieve the this rocky detail and also I start adding some like this one some some holes small holes on the walls on the rocks by using the a uh, edge polish with a low focal shift and small amount of the small the uh, size of the of the brush also i start adding some uh, cracks and some carving using the the orb crack brush and also i start adding some slashes to the metal parts some holes in the bolts some slashes on the woods and that kind of, of detail as you can see here i give some bolts uh, sculpt and some slashes as well using the orb slash uh, mainly the, the clean slashes and also here on the bolts you can see that have some some insertion detail quick tip before moving forward I had to spend some time trying to define the materials used in the building for example I try to pick up this kind of reference where uh, I grab this metal uh, this combination for example of this rocky wall with some metal in these bricks so I try to use this as a reference for my building and apply the same here for example this uh, metal on the tower on the on the corner uh, together with these bricks and all that stuff once I have my sculpt done I just organize my folder based on what I need to bake uh, for example you can see here I group them by this part this part like uh, four different folders Marmosa Toolback lets you create baking groups so this way is easier to manage the pieces and have a better results but before doing any bakes uh, we need to do the retopology and the UV mapping so I just merge those folders and I just stick with this measure these two tools and I just apply the the decimation master to each one of, of these sub tool to bring them to to Maya. Retopology in this case is quite straightforward. In general I do the new topology as separate pieces as you can see here that everything has its own mesh clipping with the others and except for some of the pieces like these ones that have the rocky parts with the metal welded together and also this base uh, this column here uh, and this is just to to avoid some artifacts and have some smooth normals on the bakings 
After the topology is done, I start to split and open the UVs. Note that in the in most of the cases, I just try to have my shells and my and my edges on the shells like uh, rectified. At this point, I can start making some baking test, and if nothing is too damaged, I just start to polish the baking with the with the Marmose tool bag tool. Uh, for example, these two, the offset and the skew tools. Also, remember to keep the same groups in the low poly as the ones in the sculpt. Alright, topology done, UVs done and baking done. It's time to duplicate the parts that should be overlapping the UVs. As you can see here, I have uh, the repeated parts here highlighted so this part should be the overlaps in the in the UV if you do this after the bakes are done you're getting sure that those UVs are going to be overlapped and won't have any baking issues as you can see here I have my instances or repeated parts uh, inside Marmoset toolback as well once we have the model ready I just make sure to freeze the transform here and just make sure to have my pivot in the center of the scene. With this done, we can export this to Substance Painter and the texture maps we baked as well. So here in Substance Painter I have my textures loaded and I have my mesh imported into the scene. Okay, with everything set up, we can start adding the basic colors. At this point, I bring back again my references because I think sculpting and texturing are the key stages to achieve the stylized look that I'm looking for. In this case, I try to match the goals of, for example, this model, these references, and the metal to this one. The gray metal with that bluish tones. I also try to match the shingles to these ones here. I like the style and the color tone here. And because I have three types of walls. I try to do a mixture between this wall color here and this one and maybe some lighter tone like this one. Okay, now that we have these base colors, I just start giving some, some details. For example, here in this material, uh, I just add a base light uh, in this case because I have uh, the material applied on the bottom part here in this in this part and this part uh, also I have this applied to the top uh, part of the building so I wanted to give a kind of a gradient effect um, from the top to the bottom uh, also, I added a kind of a grunge uh, color pass uh, that is affecting the, the color and the roughness channel. After that, I just added a multiply it or no. It's, uh, it's in normal blending with a low a, a little bit less opacity. Uh, I just using the AO mask that we baked with a darker tone. Uh, same for the for the edge. I'm using the curvature uh, mask. And oops, I just do the same but with a sharper 
a mask using the same curvature texture. Then I give some a, some cavity a, with a multiply color, and again using the curvature a, texture. And lastly, I'm using what is this? Oh, this is for the uh, for the holes. I'm using, for example, these parts, these small dots, to simulate some uh, damaging to the to the rock. Okay, um, I did the same. If you see the base color. We have this effect, and I did the same for the for the other uh, tone, uh, like this one. For example, this is the grunge map. Uh, this is another grunge map with st a stronger intensity here. Um, this is the AO using the the baked AO. Some brighter tones, say soft tones on the on the edges, and some sharp edges with a lighter tone to give it more more of that stylized look. And lastly, this cavity map that I'm using to to give it to give them a, a little bit more of depth to the to the walls. Okay, so I did the same process for the other uh, color, uh, which has some grunge. This is uh, uh, this grunge is kind of the same for the other uh, tones, and it's a procedural uh, grunge I used uh, from the resources in the Substance Painter. Um, I have this kind of AO to in this case to to simulate the some dirt accumulated in the in these crevices and these cavity areas. Um, I have of course these uh, cavities here with a multiply using again the texture the curvature texture that we baked. And again, the this broad soft edge together with this sharp, uh, sharp and, and a little bit lighter edges. And I'm not sure this one is. Oh, in this is the same as as the first one. These are the dots with a a bit of height. For the other metals, I have this kind of brass for the bolts. Uh, also, I have this for the golds, and I use this on the on the cloth part for the banner. Also, I have this uh, base material for the for the windows. I'm not gonna worry too much about it because this gonna have some emissive details and, and painting and, and lastly just to make sure that there are not not artifacts or some unwanted uh, views I just put this black material to this uh, kind of planes to simulate uh, the interior after that I just keep basically doing the same using the the same technique for the rest of the materials uh, for example the the shingles have a some AO for the for the crevices and the, the cavity it has the same cavity it has some some edge in this case I have uh, the same AO but inverted so I can have this kind of highlighted edges instead of using the the curvature map and some grunge with uh multiply with uh, with the AO and 
I mean, using the, the AO as a mask with a grunge applied on top, just to give this kind of effect. And if you see here, this one has kind of, it's very subtle, but it has some, some bluish, kind of bluish purple tone on top of the, of the red. So I'm going to show you for the glass. Uh, I didn't put too much effort on the glass. I just g give them. A, I just gave it a little bit of a, this kind of greenish tone here, a, but nothing, nothing else. Just the metallic and the roughness, a, which is. A, rougher on the on the cavities and less rougher in the center of the glass and we have the same for the i mean the same as the rest of the of the walls and the shingles we have the same for the metals uh, which i have here the metals the metal has just, has just this uh, grunge applied with these kind of slashes. Um, it has some cavity, some broad edges with some, some soft effect. Uh, the sharper edges, again using the curvature, same for the AO. And some subtle effect I did here and we can go and move forward with the golds here same technique just broad and soft edges uh, these are the sharper edges and some dark AO uh, with a low intensity just to give a, a little bit of depth if we see the the overall color, the material, and the roughness channel, you see that I have this kind of tone in the rough channel, roughness channel, which gives me this not so shiny effect, which I'm looking for, looking at my references. For example, I have this, which is not too too bright or too shine, so it works for now and for the cloth I have this oops sorry I have this uh, the base color I have some dark AO some uh, light AO and here I have the cavities for the wrinkles that you can see here and I just gave gave it a kind of a bluish purple tone here to to break the 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 red tone here and I just added this effect this border with some hate in it I added this. I didn't know what to put here, so I just decided to go with some classic uh, Hero of the Storm logo. And the final touch, some edge mask uh, with a little bit of, what is this? Uh, yeah, a light tone here in overlay. So to finish this, I'm going to show you what I did for the windows. I just have this, as, as, as I said earlier, I have this, uh, this base and no, I did this, this metal frame uh, for these two windows. Remember that this is a uh, overlaps in the UV. So I just paint this uh, mesh and it's going to be replied and applied here 
and here and here in the in the four towers the four corners so if we if we see the the materials i have the little bit of height uh, effect here and i just started to add some um kind of gradients as you can see here to have this effect if we look at the references I have for example these ones I wanted to achieve this kind of, of uh, effect for the windows for the light so I try to match the, the style uh, for the gradient and uh, also the colors for the door I just try to match this kind of this uh, look this style uh, and again I try to match the color and the gradients and also this extra for the center in these ones these three layers I just have the same for example I have the same color applied to the emissive so the emissive has the, has the same color as the base color uh, on the three three of the on these three layers so after a uh, first pass on the texturing here in substance painter we can start um, exporting the meshes the uh, sorry the meshes no the the textures to the to the engine a Marmoset toolbag or, or in my case a real engine for so here in Unreal I have the I bring my mesh and I bring my my uh, textures which I have here these four textures you can do the same for the for the Marmoset toolbag I just have my mesh here imported and I have my material here in, in Marmoset with this kind of the same settings um, I have the normal map, the roughness, uh, the metalness and the occlusion which I'm using also in the cavity map and of course the emissive map and the base color um, I didn't tweak uh, this material too much so this is how it looks like kind of default uh, except for for the like obviously but um, this is the just the, ma the material for the rocks and trees although I just had the concept for the tower I wanted to make a small environment scene with some rocks trees and nature around it no extra building needed or magnate props needed so I started to gather more references from the game and Michael Vicente portfolio and rank process I wanted to make this kind of trees and this kind of rocks for the rocks I just wanted to have two types some small rocks which I can move freely and scatter around on the floor and some bigger rocks which could be modular to be able to stack them and place them next to each other and achieve that kind of cliff or rocky wall effect so with these two references in mind I just started to make some sculpt tests and eventually I ended up with these models I have here like two kind of trunk for the trees and this cut kind of trunk and for the rocks I have like these three types of small rocks and these two types of bigger rocks to be able to place them next to each other as I said earlier in the case of the rocks for example I have the, here this small rock I'm going to show you quickly what I did um, I just started with a 
space geometry with oops with a sphere and just apply some dynamics uh, dynamic to the rock which is kind of high here but we're not going to worry about it um, and just started to use the the click curve brush that you can select here and start making some some cuts oops some cuts to give that face it a uh, style to the to the rock once i have this i just start to give a little bit of of a uh, roundness since my reference i have my reference here I can see that it has some some small roundness due to to the erosion maybe uh, so we can start pulling out the the faces a little bit start deforming it like here once I have that I just give some just to try with the trim dynamic brush start to add some cuts here and also with my oops, with my um, curve brush I just start to make it some some cuts on the on the corners uh, and once I have my kind of my basic shape here I just make a a series measure. I just apply a series measure. And you can see here. Normally, I just project. I I make a a a, a lower version of the series measure and just project that to the to the dynamesh. Uh, sub 2 but in this case we can work with this one so I just start to add in sub -sub some subdivisions and apply some or flatten brush this one or flatten edge oops that. this one to polish a little bit better the the edges together with the trim dynamic brush once I'm happy with the results I just start breaking up the shape a little bit on the corners again like this one for example and you can do like kind of this uh, separation like you have this face and next you have this face kind of uh, with this crease here it should be a little bit uh, more polished but just for now i think it's okay and also on the edges some of the edges if you have like for example 
this edge you can add some details like this one to help breaking the a little bit more the silhouette and the and the edge uh, and after the overall shape is done and the damaging on the corners on the edges I start to add some with a little bit of the intensity on a uh, low I just start add some some of the orb orb rock detail this one for example and in some cases where I have this uh, noisy surface and this noisy surface uh, I just give a, a trim dynamic or, or 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 the or flatten edge to break up the the detail here And this is the overall process for the rocks. Um, obviously, with a little bit more of time and, and polish. For this sidable ground here, I applied the same technique I did for the rocks. I did this variation and also this other variation, which is kind of a flatter ground. I try to achieve this look from the orb portfolio and if you can see here this has the same placement for the rocks just this has more like a rocky shape and this has more of, of a flatter look so I try to replicate and achieve the same style for both of the texture What I did here was just taking the same rocks I have here and making some adjustments like apply some flatten using the clip curve brush and the herb flatten brush and after that I just adjusted the crevices to close the gaps between. The rest of the details are done using the herb rock detail brush, some trim dynamic brush on the edges and the small pebbles brush on top of some rocks. For the pine leaves, I started from a sphere and applied a dynamite to it and started to deformate it until I had this branch shape. For the needles, I just started from this basic shape and then I duplicated and distributed around the branch and then pulled it out a bit some of the tips until I got the style from the reference. For the tree leaves, I applied kind of the same process. First, I did a paint over using the reference to help me understand the shapes better. After that, I just sculpted some basic leaves and distributed them until I got a similar result. For the tile level sculpt, I decided to use Substance Designer just for practice. As you can see here, the texturing process for the floor is basically the same between them. I just wanted to be sure that the colors were the same on both textures. As you can see here in the references. Same for the grass material and grass blades where both were done directly in Substance Designer. I had to be sure that the two textures had the same color tone or at least very similar to avoid any visible seams between the floor and the cords. Just to show you a quick breakdown of the trees in Maya, I just applied the base color to a flat plane and started cutting the plane in the different pieces I needed. Then I do a polish and start to move the vertices to give it a better of a leaf shape. I used this option in the transform tool to keep my UVs in place while adjusting the verts. 
once I'm done with the leaf shape, I just turn off the preserve UV option and just start place it and duplicate it around the trunk. For the other kind of tree, I used the same but using this plain shape instead and arrange them a bit different. So for this final step, I use the default scene inside Unreal Engine 4 to throw the assets and do the material settings. I just have three master materials, one for the tower, rocks and trunk with a standard configuration and one for the leaves and grass blades since they are using transparency and some wind effects and the last one for the floor with the four materials applied using vertex paint. After everything is working and after some test to the vertex paint floor, I created a new level and start placing the assets to build the scene environment. I just wanted to have the tower in the center and some rocks in the background as some kind of natural wall and the trees around the tower like a forest. I just tried to move in stuff and see what could work better. As you can see here, this is the entire scene for this environment and it has some of the assets I made before, like these rocks, all of the trees, the floor with the four materials applied with vertex paint, these bushes, and of course the tower. I wanted to give it a night mood to this scene with some bluish lighting, but at the end I added some lights like this one here and this here and a couple more here to help me break the flat look and bring some interesting contrast and some richness to the color of the scene. And just one note, here you can see what I said about maintaining the same color tones between the textures. For example, this is one of the ground tile texture and this is the other. And you can see here the blending between those two. But in terms of color tone, you can see that it's the same. Same for the rocks here, the rock mesh. I try to maintain the same color tone between these meshes and the floor, the rock texture of the floor. And also the grass texture for the ground, the tileable grass texture and these play cards. You can see here that there is a bit of seam, but in general they share the same color, so it has kind of a smooth transition between the tileable texture and the grass cards. This is all for now, I hope this breakdown helps you and thanks for watching.